Gene Skiff, who was a poet and a member of Sasso, drove Steve to the, I think it was a warmer police station, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know the name of that police station where we were taken. It was the security police headquarters. I can't remember because it was the first time I was there and it was the last time I was there. And I, they were not going to introduce it. Now you are at uh, what, what? <laughs> you go in, you are scared, you are angry, you are frustrated, you don't know, you are confused more than anything else. What's happening with the security police? And those were exactly the same guys who made us Steve. Those, that group of, 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 of security police, uh, Nivold was there. Because I got to know him later through his notoriety. I don't remember the others by name because it was not something that I concentrated on for the rest of my life. They started questioning us and they told us that we were banned. And I can only remember one particular thing was that they threatened Steve with violence and he stood up to them. If you've never been in front of an African or policeman during the apartheid days, or a security policeman when they have you in a corner, you don't understand what was happening in that room when they were threatening you, but not physically touching you. And you had to stand up and defy them with your tone, with your body language, with your words, Steve stood up to those security policemen. They were mad. And he was defiant to a point where I was trembling, thinking that, good God, they're going to murder you or what? The atmosphere in that room and Steve was standing his ground, you can never understand it until you saw it. But it happened within a few seconds or maybe a minute or two, and it was over. And after having seen that, I understood what happened later when he was defying them, the time that they actually beat him to death. I understood because I had seen him defying them, and that was more or less he, it, it was second nature to him. He lived what he preached. He was never afraid. I've never seen a, a man who was unafraid like him when faced by white people. It's a, it's a huge problem even today in South Africa. Black people, that's how They're afraid of whites, deep down. Now, you have to meet someone like, like him and you realize, and you see the white men crumble. That kind of thing doesn't happen every day. We shrink, we give ground, especially in the work situation, where I don't know where you are working now and how the conditions are there, but bad people give ground quickly in order not to jeopardize their situation. I can tell you about so many other people in the black consciousness movement of those days, when it was absolutely crazy to stand up to any white man. I remember one day we were coming from Hammanskral and I was beaten up by a policeman because they were beating a white, a black woman and I stood, we stood with our cars and I was taking them pictures and they beat me up. And <laughs> I defied that white man and they took me to the police station, they charged me, they left me because the Red Daily Mail was phoning and saying this and that. And when we went to court, Steve came all the way from Devon to come and give me support. Because it was so rare to stand up to a white person, in those, especially police people. So it was not just anger. It was a conviction that is so deep that you cannot describe it. You, you cannot tell yourself, why did I just do what I did? You, 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 you defy yourself, you defy your habits, you defy your upbringing, you defy your conditioning. 
and because something has clicked in your mind that I need to get on. That that's where we were. 